Welcome everyone, join us today as we pay homage to Fast Eddie Clark, the legendary guitarist of Motorhead. From his powerful guitar riffs, to his relentless energy, helping define a generation of rock and metal. So let's dive in. Fast Eddie Clark born Edward Allen Clark on the 5th of October 1950 in Twickenham Middlesex, in England. From a young age, Eddie was passionate about music. His father bought him his first guitar for £15 after winning on a horse race. Eddie spent three weeks practicing the first song he learned, Summertime, before playing it for his parents. By age 15, he had left school to become a TV repairman and had already played in numerous local bands, including one named The Bitter End. Eddie played local gigs until 1973 when he went professional, joining Curtis Knight's blues progressive rock band Zeus as the lead guitarist. In 1974, they recorded an album called The Second Coming at Olympic Studios. Eddie composed the music for The Confession, set to Knight's lyrics. Eddie recorded the album, Sea of Time, with Zeus before moving on to a new venture. Alongside guitarist Alan Callan, keyboardist Nicky Hogarth, and drummer Chris Perry, he participated in a jam session at Command Studios in Piccadilly. The tracks from this session caught the attention of Anchor Records, leading to a recording deal. With this contract in hand, Eddie, Hogarth, and Perry left Zeus to focus on their new band, Blue Goose, with Callan. Eddie soon formed a new band called Continuous Performance, with bebop deluxe bassist Charlie Tumahai, vocalist Anne McCluskey, and drummer Jim Thompson. Despite their efforts, they disbanded in early 1975 when their demo tracks failed to secure a record deal. Undeterred, Eddie then teamed up with Nicky Hogarth from Blue Goose, bassist Tony Cussins, and drummer Terry Slater to form another group. Unfortunately, this venture also failed to land a record deal, leading Eddie to temporarily step away from the music industry. In 1976, Eddie joined Motorhead through his connection with drummer Phil Taylor, who was working for Eddie as a laborer on a houseboat restoration in Chelsea, London. However, Lemmy Kilmister's authorized biography suggests that Eddie was actually introduced to Lemmy by a receptionist at the rehearsal studio named Gertie, who was romantically involved with Eddie at the time. Soon after, Eddie began playing with the band. In their early days, they rehearsed at Snobs Rehearsal Studios, part of a converted brewery in Chelsea known as the Furniture Cave, before heading out on the road. By April 1977, Eddie and Phil were living in squats, struggling, and considered quitting Motorhead. They agreed to a farewell show at the Marquee Club in London. Lemmy arranged a recording session with Ted Carroll of Chiswick Records, resulting in 13 tracks. Chiswick released the single Motorhead in June, and the album Motorhead in August, which briefly charted. The band then toured the UK with Hawkwind and the Count Bishops. In March 1978, Tony Secunda took over managing Motorhead, and their cohesiveness became so unstable that for a time Eddie and Phil had formed the band Muggers, with Speedy Keen and Billy Rath. By July, Douglas Smith resumed managing the band and secured a deal with Bronze Records. They released the single, Louie Louie, which peaked at number 68 on the UK singles chart. Motorhead promoted it through a UK tour, a BBC Radio 1 session, and a Top of the Pops appearance. The single's success led to a contract extension with Bronze Records. In March 1979, the band released the album Overkill, which reached number 24 on the UK Albums Chart, with the single Overkill, peaking at number 39. They followed it with the Overkill UK Tour. Despite the single, No Class Faring Worse, reaching number 61, the band continued to work on their next album. LP Bomber was released in October 1979, reaching number 12 on the UK Albums Chart and the single Bomber, peaked at number 34. The Bomber tour featured a dramatic aircraft bomber-shaped lighting rig. During this time, United Artists released, On Parole, which peaked at number 65 on the UK Albums Chart. In May 1980, the Golden Years Live EP was released, reaching number 8 on the UK Singles Chart. The band continued to gain recognition with a televised performance at Nottingham Theatre Royal in August, broadcast in April 1981. In August and September 1980, Motorhead recorded at Jackson Studios in Rickmansworth with producer Vic Mailer. They released the Ace of Spades single on October 27, 1980, ahead of the album of the same name on November 8. The single reached number 15 on the charts, while the album peaked at number 4, their highest position ever. Bronze Records marked its gold record status with a limited edition of the album pressed in gold vinyl. Motorhead performed Ace of Spades on Top of the Pops in November and embarked on their Ace Up Your Sleeve UK tour from October 22nd to November 29th, supported by Girls School and Vardis. The iconic Arizona desert-style album cover photos were taken at a sandpit in Barnet. 
Ace of Spades became a Motorhead anthem, showcasing their raw power and speed, and solidifying their place in music history without compromising their style. Eddie was responsible for the punk chugs and cascading peak metal riffs within Ace of Spades, as well as Capricorn, Overkill, and Fast and Loose. Alongside the release of Ace of Spades, Motorhead's Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers hit number 43 on the UK singles chart. They continued their chart success throughout 1981 with the St. Valentine's Day Massacre EP reaching number 5 and the live Motorhead single at number 6. And album, No Sleep, Till Hammersmith topped the UK albums chart. In April through July, Motorhead embarked on their first North American tour as guests of Blizzard of Oz, Ozzy Osbourne's early band incarnation. Despite their busy schedule, they managed a Top of the Pops appearance on July 9 to promote their live Motorhead single. In October, they recorded tracks at BBC's Maida Vale studio for The David Jensen Show, airing on October 6. The band started a European tour on November 20 with Tanker support, after which Eddie Clark produced Tank's debut album, Filth Hounds of Hades at Ramport Studios in December and January. In addition to playing guitar and contributing backing vocals, Eddie also took the lead on a few Motorhead tracks. He shared vocals with Lemmy on Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, and duetted on I'm Your Witch Doctor. Eddie also sang lead on Step Down, and reluctantly took the lead on Emergency, although he admitted he disliked singing lead vocals. Eddie parted ways with Motorhead in 1982, citing dissatisfaction with the outcome of their next album, Iron Fist. The circumstances surrounding his departure remain contentious. While Eddie claimed in later interviews that he was pushed out by drummer Phil Taylor, the official narrative at the time was that he had voluntarily resigned. The collaboration with the Plasmatics during the Iron Fist recording sessions reportedly exacerbated tensions. Eddie was particularly uneasy about the band's decision to cover each other's songs for the B-side of the Stand By Your Man EP, feeling it compromised Motorhead's artistic integrity. However, according to Joel McIver, Eddie himself later refuted this version of events. Following the end of Motorhead's classic lineup, Eddie was replaced by Brian Robertson, former lead guitarist of Thin Lizzy and Wild Horses, after Anvil frontman Steve Lips Cudlow declined the opportunity to join the band. Eddie's final performance with Motorhead took place at the New York Palladium on 14 May 1982. He later made a guest appearance on the band's 2000 album Live at Brixton Academy, released in 2003. On this album, Motorhead featured several guest guitarists, including Eddie, who contributed to tracks like No Class, The Chase Is Better Than The Catch, and Overkill. Hearing of UFO bassist Pete Way's intention to leave the band, Eddie met with him and they decided to form a new band, which they named Fastway, combining elements of their own names. They advertised for a drummer and vocalist, and during rehearsals, Clash drummer Topper Heaton filled in on drums. They received cassette tapes from potential band members, including one from vocalist Dave King, whose voice impressed Eddie. He financed King's trip to London for an audition, and King joined as Fastway's vocalist. Jerry Shirley, formerly of Humble Pie, became their drummer. Fastway's demo tapes attracted CBS Records, despite Pete Way's departure just before signing. The band decided to continue, and CBS signed them. After rigorous touring, they briefly split upon returning to Britain. However, King convinced Eddie to revive Fastway, and Eddie relocated to Ireland. They recorded their second album, Waiting for the Raw, at Abbey Road Studios in London with producer Terry Manning, released in 1986. Fastway toured extensively in the US supporting ACDC and across Europe, resulting in the live album Say What You Will, live in 1992. They also contributed music to the soundtrack of the film Trick or Treat, including the title track and songs from their albums. After the band split again, Eddie returned to London and partnered with solo artist Lee Hart. Without a record deal, they presented a demo tape to Eddie's former Motorhead manager, Douglas Smith, at GWR Records, securing a deal. They recorded the on-target album under the Fastway name, featuring Don Airy and Paul Airy on keyboards, Neil Murray on bass, Bram Tchaikovsky of The Motors, and Christine Byford on backing vocals. Eddie's new group included Riff Raff on drums, keyboards, and bass, with contributions from Biff Byford and Nigel Glockler of Saxon, Don Airy, and Kim McAuliffe and Chris Bonacci of Girl School. After two albums, Eddie and Hart parted ways. Eddie's excesses throughout his time with Motorhead led to a hospital stay and recuperation. After recovering, he released a solo album, It Ain't Over Till It's Over, blending Motorhead and Fastway styles. Lemmy contributed by writing and singing Laugh at the Devil. Eddie's career-spanning, Fast Eddie Clark Anthology, was released by Sanctuary Records, 
leading to a reformed Fastway's return to live performances, including the Download Festival in 2007. In 2014, Eddie returned to his blues roots, releasing Make My Day, Back to Blues, a collaboration with Shack Attack keyboardist Bill Sharp. On 6 November 2014, Eddie reunited with Lemmy at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham to perform Ace of Spades. Personally, Eddie explained the origin of his Fast Eddie moniker by saying, the name wasn't related to sex or my playing speed. It was simply because I could play one note in a solo incredibly fast, highlighting his skillful tremolo picking. He was married to Mariko Fujiwara, a Japanese film and music producer he met in the 1980s, and he cherished their Maltese terrier, Cookie. Sadly, on January 10, 2018, Eddie Clark passed away at the age of 67, while receiving treatment for pneumonia. He was laid to rest in Twickenham Cemetery, Witten, Greater London. And there you have it. Thank you for watching our homage to Fast Eddie Clark. His contributions to Motorhead and the music industry will never be forgotten, while his legacy lives on through the timeless tracks he helped create and the countless musicians he inspired. Stay tuned for more stories of rock legends and their lasting legacies. Take care and bye for now.